Hi. Now I'm often asked, why does y equals f of x minus a translate any graph of the form y equals f of x, a units to the right? And similarly, why does y equals f of x plus a translate the graph y equals f of x, a units to the left? It doesn't seem to make any sense. Well, hopefully this tutorial will fix that. What I've got here is a graph, y equals f of x. It could be any graph, but I've chosen this particular graph to pass through some nice points, okay? And I've done that so that you should be able to see how this works. So if we were to draw up a table for these values here, something like this where we have got our x values going from minus 3 to 4. Now if we were to look at y equals f of x, in other words work out what the corresponding y values are for any particular given value of x. Say we look at x equals 4 you can see that from the graph here, when x equals 4, the corresponding y value is 3. So what we can say is that f of 4 equals 3. And if we took x to be 3, what would f of 3 be? Well, we can see from the graph here that f of 3 would be 1. And so if we mark that in here, we've got f of 3 equals 1. Now to save time, we could fill in all of these values. You might want to pause the video at this stage and just write them in. But if not, here they are, okay? So do check them out, okay? And they should correspond to these points along the graph. Now what happens if we try out something like this? Let's say we try out y equals f of x minus 1. What happens if we were to say take the point where x is 4? If x was 4, we've got y equals f of 4 minus 1. In other words, f of 3. But what is f of 3? We can see that f of 3 was 1. Or we could look straight away from the graph here, f of 3 was 1. Either way, when x is 4, f of 3 equals 1. So let's just mark this on here. So we've got 4 and 1. So just put that point there. OK? Let's do another one. Let's see when x is 3. What do we get? Well, if we put 3 into y equals f of x minus 1, we've got y equals f of 3 minus 1, which is f of 2. What was f of 2? From the table, f of 2 was 0. Or you could see it from the graph here, that it was 0. So if we were to write that in, OK, f of 2 equals 0, and plot this, remember we're plotting this point at x equals 3. So you, when x is 3, you've got a y value of 0. So at 3, you've got 0. Now can you see just from these two points here that this point has been translated one unit to the right? And the same with this point here, it's been translated one unit to the right. You might again want to just try and work out what these points are going to be. But to save time, I've done this, OK? so. We've got our remaining values along here. You'll notice with x equaling minus 3, I've done a dotted line here. And the reason for that is because when x is minus 3, you're going to have f of minus 3 minus 1, f of minus 4. And I don't have a value at the moment for what f of minus 4 was. So that's why I've had to leave this one blank. Now if we plot these points, OK, let's just say we've got this one here, minus 2, when x is minus 2, 
the corresponding y value is minus 1. So you've got that point there. Can you see that this point has moved one unit to the right? Similarly, when we have x is minus 1, we end up with a y value of 0. So at x is minus 1, you get a y value of 0. This point, one unit to the right. And if we carry on like this, plotting the other points in, you'll see that you'll end up with a set of points like this. OK? So if we take our graph and now move it one unit to the right, you'll see that it'll move across through those points. OK? So we have a translation of y equals f of x of one unit to the right. Let's just mark that graph in, the new graph then, as y equals f of x minus 1. Now we can do much the same kind of thing by looking at, say, this type of transformation. Let's say we look at y equals f of x plus 2. Okay. This time though, what we'll do is we'll start from this end. We'll start with x equaling minus 3. So if x is minus 3, y would be equal to f of minus 3 plus 2. In other words, f of minus 1. And what is f of minus 1? Well, we can see from here that f of minus 1 was 2. Let's just mark it in. f of minus 1 is 2. So when x is minus 3, the y value is 2. So we've got that point there. And can you see that what we've got then is that this point has moved two units to the left. Let's try it out for this point here when x is minus 2. When x is minus 2 you're going to have y equals f of minus 2 plus 2, f of 0. What was f of 0? f of 0 was equal to 3. Or you could read it from the graph again. So if we mark that one in there, OK, we've got that. And we can plot this. x is minus 2, you get a corresponding y value of 3. So when x is minus 2, you get a corresponding value of 3. And again, you can see this point here has moved across two places. If we repeat this for all the other values here, you should be able to work them out, but again, to save time, here are those remaining values. And if we plot them, OK, we're going to find that our points, OK, are moved two units to the left. So this point here, when x is 2, will end up here at 0. And this point here will end up two units to the left, like so. And this point here, two units to the left. And all these points here that I've done in blue should agree with the values that you've got in your table. And again, for x equaling 3, I got f of 5. But I had to leave it blank because I have no value for that. And the same when x was 4. I ended up with f of 6. So if we were to take our curve, OK, and then translate it, this time two units to the left, it will go across to those points there, OK? So let's just mark that uh, in as being the graph of y equals f of x plus 2. So I hope that's given you an idea just on two numerical examples, why this does what it says here. So in summary, what we've got for these ones is that y equals f of x minus 1 translates y equals f of x, one unit to the right. And y equals f of x plus 2 translates y equals f of x, two units to the left. 